Welcome back, my gardening friends, to another Focal Point Friday episode. Let's spend just a few minutes together reviewing a snippet of information from a previous episode, highlighting a new topic, or quickly focusing on a current event in the food and agriculture world. Let's get down and dirty. When it comes to food safety, fermented vegetables can actually be safer than raw vegetables because that very process of fermentation actually kills the harmful bacteria in the foods by using the bacteria that's in the foods. So obviously, having said that, you need to keep basic food safety practices still need to be followed while you're fermenting foods. And also keep in mind that the bigger concern is contamination after the veggies have been fermented. So just make sure when you're handling your jars and everything, you have clean hands and it doesn't come in contact with raw meat or anything else like that, right? This is not a fail-safe um, way to store your food. But it is a really good way to store your food to improve the shelf life and also, you know, improve the health benefits maybe of the food. Things like cabbage, beets, radishes, turnips, carrots, those are sort of the beginner's um, fermenting foods because the bacteria that's living on the surface of those foods already is doing the fermenting for us. We don't have to add anything to it in order to get it to start fermenting. And then once we get into these, you know, easy ones and we sort of figure out what we're doing with those, then we can jump into recipes that maybe involve inoculating the foods with a bacteria like, you know, lactobacillus that can jumpstart the fermentation process. I say that I'm new to fermenting, but I actually do make my own homemade yogurt with milk from our local dairy. And how I do that is by inoculating that milk with the lactobacillus cultures from the previous batch of yogurt. So I'm inoculating it and then I'm bringing it to a certain temperature and that allows it to ferment and I end up with yogurt. Now I should say there is a little bit of a difference between pickling like how we pickle with vinegar versus fermenting which could be sort of considered pickling. You can do pickles through fermentation but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're pickling everything when you're fermenting. So things can be pickled with an acidic vinegar brine, or they can be pickled using a salty brine without the vinegar, and then it's fermenting. During fermentation, this food is naturally going to develop a sort of sour flavor because of the chemical reactions that are going on. So even though both vinegar pickles and fermented pickles may taste vinegary, one is because of the added acid of the vinegar and the other one is because of the natural fermentation. So there is a difference there. So the other thing that I found when researching this was that it seems that fermented vegetables will last for a year or more um, in a good cold storage location, but fermented fruits should be consumed within just a few weeks. And I guess the reason is um, fruit has a lot of natural sugars, which can add to or speed up spoilage and also helps it turn into alcohol. So if that's your intention, that's one thing. But if it's not, you might have a very alcoholic surprise when you go to open your fermented fruits. So um, a lot of these beginner recipes are definitely focused towards fermenting vegetables. So here's the thing. People who ferment foods mainly just for their health benefits will often just store them in the refrigerator when this process is done. But if we're looking to use this as a preservation method, that sort of defeats the purpose, right? So how should we properly store these fermented foods once they're ready? Well, in this instance, we go back to cold storage. So once it's to the point that you want it to be, then you transfer your ferment to cold storage. It's between 32 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, temperature affects the fermentation process, right? The warmer our home is, the faster the food is going to ferment. The same thing goes for the storage once the ferment is complete. So the cold is going to slow down the fermentation process, but it's not going to stop it completely. It is going to continue to ferment while it's in storage, but it's gonna be at a much slower pace. So we're gonna be able to keep our fermentations for a while in that cold storage. This is why the colder the location, the better. Now, what I've read is you can actually lengthen this storage life a little bit by putting them in cold storage just a little bit early. 
right? Since they're going to continue to ferment slowly while they're sitting there, then you could keep them from getting too sour or too soft by storing them just a little bit early. So if you have several jars of something and you're wanting to use one of them sooner rather than later, but the other ones you want to keep for the next six months, then maybe put three of them away early and let them to continue to slowly ferment and let one jar go all the way to where you want it to be before putting it in the cold store. Just make sure you're marking it properly. The one thing that you do really want to do, though, is to keep an eye on those brine levels. You may need to push down those veggies or add a little bit of brine to keep everything below the brine in order to be able to avoid mold. So once you put something in storage, remember, we're always keeping an eye out for spoilage. And then another note was to possibly consider a higher salt ratio. Um, it should help the ferments to store for longer, but keep in mind it's also going to make them taste a little bit saltier too. So, you know, this is something that you can play with. It seems like a lot of these recommendations are a little loosey-goosey when it comes to fermentation. So long as you're keeping things under the brine, then it's all generally regarded as being safe. You just have to keep an eye out for, you know, the mold and stuff, and, and your temperature seems to be the key component here. Everything else seems to be, well, you can play with it a little bit. Thanks for joining me on this Focal Point Friday. I'll be back again on Tuesday for another regular episode of the Just Grow Something podcast. So until next time, my gardening friends, keep on cultivating that dream garden, and we'll talk again soon.